Hey, welcome back. I'm your business guide, Michael Rager, and we're ready to bring on Kristen Gunderson of Gunderson's Bookkeeping, and she's going to talk about one of the things that business owners just dread. We hate it. It's that time of year. It's tax season. But we've got to understand, especially if we have 1099 employees, what are the things that we need to do to be compliant? You need to listen to Kristen because she's going to keep you out of trouble with the IRS. Take it away, Kristen. Thank you so much for having me on the Biz Talk Show today. I am Kristen Gunderson with Gunderson's Bookkeeping. I'm so glad to be here to be able to answer all of your bookkeeping and tax questions. So the question that we got for today, we actually have two questions. One on, tell me about 1099s. Who do we have to send them to? Um, when are they due? What happens if we don't send them? And then the second question I'm gonna answer today is when are my business taxes due? So let's get to 1099s. So per the IRS, anyone that has worked for you doing services, including like if you're a landlord um, and people are doing services for you and they do $600 or more in the year, you have to send them a 1099 by January 31st, post stamped in the mail and send that to the client for everything that they worked for the last year. And it has to be for everyone who is unincorporated. So that's the key question, what is unincorporated? So unincorporated is anyone who is an individual, they could be a sole proprietorship, they could be a partnership, they could even be an LLC. A lot of times people think that because they're an LLC they don't have to send them a 1099. Well, that's not necessarily true. The only way that you will know if you need to send them a 1099 is you need to get that W-9 from them and what I request is you withhold your payment, like you do not send them that check, you do not send them Venmo, Zelle, PayPal uh, for their services until you get that W-9 on hand from that client, no matter if they've worked um, like $100 worth or $1,000 worth, like you don't know how much you're going to pay them throughout the year, but get that W-9 from them. Because on the W-9, it's not only going to have their name, their business name, their EIN, or their social, and their address, it's also going to have what type of entity they are. If they are an S-Corp or a C-Corp, you do not need to send them the 1099 in January. So another thing people get confused about is, well, I didn't have any contract laborers work for me, so I don't need to send out 1099s. That's not necessarily true either because anyone who's doing a service for you, you have to send a 1099 to. So this could be your bookkeepers, your CPAs, your lawyer. And lawyers actually, if they work $1 or more, you have to send them a 1099 um, per the IRS. So it's not the $600 limit, it's the $1 limit for lawyers. They could be consultants, marketing, um, lawn care, office cleaning, who else? admin, especially like contract laborers, you'll have to send them one. Um, there's like a whole list, like if they're doing a service for you, like a repair for you, um, that also includes a service. So that could be someone you'd have to send a 1099 to. And people just, they sometimes don't think about those types of people. Um, could be your plumbers, like if you have someone who's uh, doing repairs for your plumbing. Um, so just remember that there's a whole list, like if it's a service, and you paid them $600 or more, you have to send them a 1099. So what happens if you send um, money by PayPal or by Venmo? This is another question, and this has been getting really tricky uh, the last few years because like those cash apps are like so popular just to send people money nowadays. So my rule of thumb, and from everything that I've been able to research and read, if you are sending um, payment for services and you're sending it as friends and family through like Venmo or PayPal, yes, include that as a 1099 that you have to send out for. And you may, if you're sending them with different types of, if you're paying them with different types of ways, like you pay them by sometimes with a credit card and you pay them sometimes with a check and you pay them sometimes with the, the new cash apps that are out there, um, you don't, if you pay them by your like Visa, American Express, like you do not have to send them that 1099. But if you pay them with check or with the friends and family, with the, the, 
the different cash apps out there, then send them that 1099 for the services. If you are paying with PayPal and doing it as goods and services, then I would let PayPal take care of sending the 1099. Like, they, like it's already on their radar. They know, hey, I have to send a 1099 to anything that's marked as goods or services. So if you pay them as goods and services, do not send them the 1099 because then they would have two 1099s, one from PayPal and one from you. So that's a, another thing to consider. And I just had this conversation with one of my clients. She, it's turned into a nightmare, like pays people with PayPal. Sometimes she pays people with Venmo and sends checks. She pays them with her um, credit card. And it's, it's turning into a nightmare for 1099s. And I told her, you know, you are paying everyone the way that they want to be paid. Sometimes they want to be paid with Cash App. Sometimes they want to be paid with PayPal and then um, Venmo. And sometimes you're cutting them a check on your out of your bank account, like stick to one currency, like it makes it so much easier. Um, you are, you're the owner of your company. You'd be like, you know what? I am only going to pay people by PayPal and the goods and services from now on. That's the way I'm doing it. Or I'm only going to pay people by check. Like you set your own policies and procedures, send it out. It's a brand new year. Just as of January 1st of 2023, these are my new policies and procedures that I am only paying people this way from now on, whatever it is that you decide, but stick with it that way. That way it'll make it so much easier. And if you're gonna use like PayPal or Venmo, make sure that you pay them with the goods and services. That way you don't have to worry about the 1099 anyway. Um, don't, don't be paying them with the friends and family. Just say, hey, this is the way it is. So if you don't file 1099s, there's a penalty. Um, so you have to file them by, by January 31st, and then if you file them late, uh, one to 31 days late, it's a $50 per 1099 that you file late. So if you have 10 of them, that's an easy $500 penalty the IRS can assess to you. If you file them 32, at, 32 days all the way to August 1st, if you file it late during that time period, it's a $100 per 1099 that you don't file on time. So 10 of those, that's easy $1,000 penalty from the IRS that they can just collect on. And I mean, that's, that adds up. It adds up pretty quickly. If it's after August 1st and you don't send the 1099s out, it's $280 penalty for not filing, like filing them late after August 1st. And if you just flat out don't send them, um, it's kind of confusing. One is a $250 fee, but if they can prove, and this is per 1099 again, if they can prove that you just blatantly just disregard sending 1099s, I think the, the penalty was like $560 per 1099. So make sure that you get them done, um, send them in, send them in on time, and then to the individual, remember it's due January 31st, and then you have to get them electronically filed, the copies that you sent to them individuals, send it to the IRS by the end of February so that the IRS knows who you sent the 1099s to. All right, so that is everything that I have for you on 1099s. I know it's kind of confusing. If you need any help with this, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact us. The next question, that I um, got in is tax returns. And when are these tax returns due? So everyone knows August 15th is when tax returns are due. This year, because the 15th falls on a Saturday, um, it is April 18th that tax returns are due this year. And everyone kind of thinks, oh, April 15th is a deadline for everything. That is not necessarily true. Um, so it's April 15th, remember 18th this year, but April 15th, if you are an individual, um, your form 1040 for all individuals are due 1040 April 15th. If you have a business and it's just a Schedule C, like a DBA, a Schedule C or a single member LLC, that goes as a Schedule C onto your personal tax return, the 1040, that is due April 15th. If you have a C corporation, that is due April 15th. So what about all the other businesses? There's, there's partnerships, there's multi-person um, multi LLCs, there's S-Corps. All of those are due March 15th. 
they're due a month ahead of time because the business tax return needs to be done and the profit and loss needs to be figured out and then a K-1 gets done and the K-1 is for each partner, uh, each owner of the business and that K-1 will show just the net net profit or the net net loss that the the company made, that's your portion, and then that K-1 has to be filed on the personal, the 1040 tax return, which is due April 15th. So don't forget to file your taxes on time. Um, the penalties are big, I'll mention that real quick. If you fail to file on time, um, you know you can't file on time, file the extension. The extension will give you an extra six months to be able to file. The taxes are still due by the original due date, the, the March 15th or the April 15th, but the tax return to get it filed will be six months later, so either September uh, 15th or October 15th for individuals. The, the penalty is 5% based off of what was due. So if you had an amount due that you should have paid in, it's 5% of what that amount due is per month that it's that you don't file it. So that's just the penalty for not filing. Uh, but then interest gets tacked on top of that and the interest is, it's not very clear. Um, <laughs> it, it, there's so many different ways that they charge you interest that based off of what tax return that you're supposed to file and how late it is and then what quarter of what year it was originally supposed to be done in. So for the first quarter of 2023, the interest rates vary from 3%, depending on what type of tax return you have, all the way up to 8.5%. And that just keeps on getting added on and on and on for everything that you do not pay on, the penalties and the previous interest that you got charged. So make sure that you file that, um, get that done on time. If you owe the IRS money, like get it paid down as soon as you can because that penalties and interest just keep on growing. So. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to talk about real quick is for people who have LLCs, they have to file a franchise tax report with the state. And the, the state tax returns are all due different times, but for the Texas people, because that's a lot of who I help with, the Texas franchise tax reports are due May 15th. So you got an extra month to get those filed. And even if you, your LLC isn't making any money or they didn't make any money or you may have lost money, you still have to file that franchise tax report a no tax due by May 15th. Now, if you have um, over a million and I can't remember the exact dollar amount, but a million something in sales, you will have to pay franchise tax fees, but anything for less than that million, um, it'll be a no tax due. All right, I hope that got all of your 1099 and tax questions answered for today. It was a pleasure talking with you again. I am Kristen Gunderson with Gunderson's Bookkeeping. You can reach out to us uh, by phone, 936-372-2661, or run all the social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, at Gunderson's Bookkeeping. Thanks for having me on today. Hey, Kristen, that was some great stuff. I know as a business owner, you know, we, we don't want to do all that stuff, but we know we have to do it. It's very important that you taught us the right things to do so we don't face any fines and penalties from the IRS. 